On April 11th in Las Vegas, the CinemaCon exhibition concluded, marking it as one of the most disruptive in recent years. The event featured a film about the Ninja Turtles with an R rating, among others like Transformers vs. Cobra Throw, SpongeBob, and Godzilla. Announced movies also included Gladiator 2, a prequel to The Lion King, and even talks about a Naruto adaptation. Now, let's get to the main announcements without further ado over the next couple of minutes. We'll start with something not the loudest, but definitely close to the heart. No spoilers. The Ninja Turtles are coming back to the cinema. Unexpectedly, Paramount announced a full-length film titled The Last Ronin, and last isn't just a figure of speech. In a totalitarian future New York, Shredder's grandson single-handedly kills Master Splinter and three of the four turtles. The last surviving turtle takes on the pseudonym Ronin, dons a black mask, and begins his revenge. His vengeance mirrors that of John Wick, with a high body count, torture, and a severe dose of violence. The studio confirmed the R rating and no restrictions. The movie will adapt the The Last Ronin comic, which became one of the franchise's best sellers, not only due to its unusual and touching plot, but also because of the intrigue about which of the four turtles survived. Ronin uses all the weapons of his fallen brothers and his own in his quest for revenge. A heart-wrenching moment for all readers was when it was revealed that Michelangelo, the most cheerful and carefree of the turtles, had survived. The death of his brothers and teacher turned him into a ruthless killer, and the story's adaptation is simply an incredible move by the studio. Let many plot details surely change. Adult, mature, and brutal Ninja Turtles are precisely what modern cinema needs to show old guys like us adult and life-worn versions of our favorite heroes. In addition to other exciting announcements, Paramount chose a bold move with a full-length crossover of Transformers and Rise of Cobra as part of the main universe. The current prospects of this crossover are still vague. However, insiders insist that negotiations with the studio and the director are ongoing, and some even claim that Michael Bay is close to returning to the Transformers series. Officially, it is only known that Steven Spielberg will be involved as a producer, and he has worked with Bay before, so there might be a possibility for this project. Next, we announce the Lion King prequel from Disney. The movie's release is set for December 20th, 2024, on the 30th anniversary of the original animated film. The plot will explore the story of young Mufasa and Scar, who was not yet known as Scar, but as Taka. It was Taka who saved young Mufasa's life, after which they grew up as brothers. This is the story that the project will tell, from which the audience has so far only seen one photograph. However, an excerpt from the film was shown at a closed session, and the first viewer reviews are incredible. Although Disney has earned a not-so-stellar reputation with its remakes, this project discusses an original story, and everyone who has seen it claims the visual style is indistinguishable from that of Jon Favreau's project. The picture expands the boundaries, with the characters venturing into snow, forests, and deserts. Familiar faces will also return. One of the frames shows Mufasa saving Timon and Pumbaa, Although they are not visible in the trailer, they are indeed present in the film. The essence of the project is to tell Simba and Nala's children about their history, with comments from Timon and Pumbaa, who, according to viewers, are as delightful as ever. There is a clear consensus that the project will be excellent, having been developed over four years in isolation from the Disney ecosystem, with its power struggles and quotas. Hans Zimmer will also return, so the Lion King prequel is definitely something to look forward to, as is the second season of The Monarch. Next, we lower the intensity and move on to a more friendly project from the Transformers universe, which still hasn't recovered from Michael Bay's departure. Paramount has chosen an original approach. Announced at the Blue Window was a full-length crossover of Transformers and Rise of Cobra. This will take place within the main universe, which currently ended with the uprising of the Biro bots. At the end of the main story, the main character received an invitation from G.I. Joe, and now the decision about the crossover has been solidified. However, the prospects are still foggy. Snake Eyes, the latest film adaptation of Rise of Cobra, was a major flop. Even the Transformers barely broke even under Michael Bay's direction, although the franchise used to pull in billions. Times are tough, and a crossover with a franchise that is in even worse shape looks uncertain. However, insiders insist that negotiations with the studio and the director have been ongoing, and some even claim that Bay is close to returning to the Transformers. 
Officially, it is only known that Steven Spielberg will be involved as a producer, but he has worked with Bay before. So, everything is possible. Returning to Paramount's announcements, the studio has planned a reboot of the Very Scary Movie franchise, with filming for the first installment starting this year and a release next year. Neil Moritz, known for his work on Fast and Furious and Sonic, will oversee the project. Despite low expectations due to the pursuit of nostalgia, Hollywood seems to have forgotten that the original Very Scary Movie would now be considered too risky for its jokes, which might lead to legal issues today. Paramount is either taking a risk to push boundaries or might face a predictable flop. Additionally, the studio announced a full-length film from the creators of South Park, with Kendrick Lamar as producer, promising a blend of music and risque humor. The situation mirrors that of Very Scary Movie, with potentially worse outcomes if the controversial humor is not received well. Also announce of a Minecraft movie adaptation, starring Jason Momoa, Jack Black, and Emma Myers, directed by Oscar winner Jarrett and Jay Rush from Warner Brothers with a $150 million budget. The film, announced by Jason Momoa as having completed filming, is about Emma Myers and her companions protecting their cubic world from the end dragon, set to release next year on April 4th. Paramount also announced a return of SpongeBob SquarePants with a fourth feature film, In Search of the SquarePants, scheduled for release on December 19, 2025, marking the 25th anniversary of the character's first appearance. While details about the plot are still unknown, it is essential to recognize that a SpongeBob movie leaked online is not considered canonical by Nickelodeon, unlike the officially recognized projects like the upcoming film. As for the Naruto adaptation, it is confirmed to be canon, with the original manga author Masashi Kishimoto serving as a consultant on the project, working alongside the screenwriter. This news has been eagerly awaited since the film's announcement, and fans can expect a release next year. Our review concludes by mentioning American Racing transitioning to Gladiator 2 with a trailer that impressed viewers, revealing that Pedro Pascal would play one of Emperor Caracalla's generals. The sequel promises more mind games than the original, with Ridley Scott carrying the idea for Gladiator 2 for over 20 years, and despite some criticisms, the project is respected enough to warrant attention. Stay tuned for more announcements about fascinating projects in the film industry on our channel. That's all for now. Tell us in the comments what you think about the new Ninja Turtles and see you at the next time.